I am DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I have a question. What does a telephone switch, a computer company, and Bell Labs have in common? There was a time when uh, IBM was interested in getting Unix to run on their IBM mainframes. And the reason for that was they wanted to build a, a build host to create software uh, so that the AT&T engineers could use the IBM mainframes to create the software that the switch would need. And that switch was the number five ESS. It was a the forerunner for AT&T's offering uh, into Unix and Unix servers. IBM wanted to run uh, Unix in a VM, a virtual machine, on the System 370. IBM created the IX370 later on. They, you know, they needed to compete with Amdahl's UTS, and so they wanted a, their own version, and so they built a IX370. And from that, IBM created uh, IBM AIX. The AIX came from the, <laughs> yeah, the IX and the 370. But it was what, was, what was AIX or what is AIX? It was the first version of AIX was based on AT&T's System 5 release, uh, the version 1 and 2, and then there was additional software they brought in from 4.2 and 4.3 BSD. The early versions of AIX actually had a microkernel and not a monolithic kernel. I wanted to talk a little bit about the lawsuit between SCO and IBM, since that probably is going to be one of the questions. So let's just get that out of the way. IBM added source code from uh, the Bell Labs version of System 5. This would have been Release 4 to AIX. SCO revoked IBM's AIX license and prohibited them from uh, distributing, selling, or distributing AIX. IBM said, uh, well, we, we, we think we do. We think we're in good standing. And so they went off and continued to market and sell AIX. Well, SEO sued IBM in 2003. That lawsuit went on and on and on until 2010 when finally a, uh, a verdict was uh, a judgment, I should say, not a verdict, but a uh, judgment was reached. And the uh, ruling from the lawsuit was that, that SEO was claiming they had a valid license because they owned Unix. Well, they didn't. And so uh, the, the court ruled that, no, you have no basis for this claim because Novell owns the license and the, and the trademark for Unix. Well, uh, Novell was traded on and it became part of Nokia and then it got sold on and on. So I think it's part of the open systems group officially today. Let's talk about the very first version that was released commercially. IBM had a machine that they developed called the, I, uh, the IBM RT PC, which was uh, a real-time version of their uh, systems. And it was based on, I believe, the romper uh, CPU, which was the early forerunner to the Power PC, so and it was a a, a, a risk uh, chip, so it was a reduced instruction set chip, and so they created in 1986. IBM created the Advanced Interactive Executive uh, fr with IBM's using the high IBM's homegrown IX version. In 1988, IBM released uh, a version of AIX for PS2. That was a 32-bit uh, version based on the Intel 8386 CPU. And that, that went on and was supported up through 1995, and then it went end of life, uh, of course, as the, as the processors rolled off. But AIX 370 was formed in 1988, and that was used on the IBM uh, System 370s. It evolved into what was called AIX ESA because the architecture 
once they got through the system 370s and started to enter into the 390 phase, they had a new architecture called ESA, and so they named AIX ESA. That was based on OSF1. OSF1 was the Open Systems Foundation, and uh, and so that was the the spec that was released by OSF for what Unix would be, and that ran natively. So without a virtual machine, it ran natively on the System 390. Uh, AIX 3.0 came out in 1989. That was also a RISC-based uh, machine, and it used a dynamic kernel. We haven't talked about that, so I probably will do a class on what dynamic kernels are. But IBM implemented their version of logical volume management, or LVMs, uh, and that it is quite different from the one that Linux uses. Uh, they also introduced their journal, the first journaling file system called JFS that existed in the industry. Uh, JFS still exists today, uh, although I don't know. IBM's tried to get rid of it several times, but they haven't been successful so far. It also had Smitty. Smitty was the system management uh, teletype terminal, which was a uh, curses-based administrative uh a utility that allowed you to uh, change and modify and, and manage your systems all from a, a menu uh, resource. One of the things that AIX had that I have never seen in any other Unix was it had a registry. And the registry was used to store variables. There was also some other uh, things that were first times. And that was the high ability uh, CMP. So that was the forerunner to power high availability or power HA. AIX 4.14 and 4.15 were basically created to run on the Apple network server. Now that's not the same thing as a Macintosh PowerPC. It's not the same thing as what Steve Jobs released as a server. This was something quite different. Uh, it had it was based on the uh, RISC processor that was used in IBM's machines, but uh, yeah, and don't confuse it with uh, Apple's AUX. It's nothing like AUX. Uh, AIX 5.0 ran. It was uh, uh, the beginning of the changeover from uh, the uh, Power PC to the Power series. So this would have been Power Four. Power 5, and this offered a, a scalable 64-bit kernel. JFS2 was released. They had something called an Ether channel, and then they also had a version called GLVM. GLVM came from OpenGL, and that was supplied to IBM by Silicon Graphics. They also supplied on these machines a version of their pro graphics processor, and IBM used that for what they called their low-performance graphics processor. And then IBM went on to develop their own high-performance graphics processor. AIX 5.0L was released in 2001. There was versions of that. Now, the 5.0L doesn't mean it's for Itanium. They changed over the... For whatever reason, marketing does these things. They added an L to the to the versions, and they released it for a lot of different processor spaces. One of them was for the Intel uh, IA64, which, of course, we know today as the Itanium. But it never reached um, a product status. It was strictly experimental, and it died because nobody cared. Uh, in uh, 2007, AIX 6.1 dropped, which supported the Power 6 and, and later the Power 7 architectures. It had a number of things in it. It had live partitioning. So then they also had uh, RBAC controls, which uh, allowed them to do finer-grained versions of uh, security on files and folders and so forth. Uh, also, they did. In, they had an encrypted file system. Nmon is a utility, and I think it comes uh, today. It's called NJMon, and there's also NSUMs. Nmon allows you to gather statistics on your machine, and then from that you can run it through a bunch of 
other til- utilities that'll help you determine if you're moving your, let's say that you need more, you think you need more horsepower, it will tell you what is bottlenecking your machine. Is it memory? Is it disk? Is it the number of channels? It would also do something else, and that is it would help help you determine if you're going to go buy a new machine, how to size that new machine. And so, yeah, there was a number of benchmark uh, facilities within that process uh, that would do that for you. The AIX 7.1 was released in 2010 as supported the Power 7 and then later the Power 8. It was cluster aware. It had active memory expansion. Yeah, and there was also shared storage pools. There was uh, Power SE, which was a security component as well. 7.2 dropped in 2015. That supported the Power 9. That has that introduced AIX live updates, which we see that a lot today. It is also one of the first Unix machines to use SIR, uh, SRIOV, which of course we know today is. So now you had a true cloud environment, right? Now I had, uh, it, it, if I had a machine that wasn't busy, I could borrow resources. AIX 7.3 was released in 2021. That, re- that supports the Power 8, Power 9, and Power 10. That doesn't have a lot of things, but one of the big things that IBM proved with that was in the LPAR, they were able to support up to 250 cores. But not only were they able to get to 250 cores with this LPAR, they were also able to support 1,920 threads. One of the last things I wanted to cover is Risk Five is not the only risk processor that is an open ISA. IBM's Power ISA is as well. Today they're up to version 3.1b, which was updated in September uh, 2021. So yeah, there is another alternative out there that does have open ISA. AIX has a, a long history. It's been a lot of years that IBM has been working with AIX. AIX obviously is still around. It's quite a bit different than anything. I remember one story I remember is that I was down in Austin. Austin was kind of the hub for AIX development. And so I was down in Austin one year, and it was a bunch of guys sitting around working on an AIX machine. And I noticed the commands they were using were LI and TN and all these other commands. And I was like, what? What is that? I never had used the LI or, I mean, I kind of knew what TN was, but uh, TN was how you started up a Telenet session, and LI was IBM's replacement for LS. And I thought it was kind of funny that one one time we had a couple of guys come up from uh, from the Austin uh, uh, plant to come and help us with some development on some machines that were sun-based. And they were lost. <laughs> they were completely lost. And they were so accustomed to IBM's extensions to Unix that yeah, they, could, they couldn't function in, in, a, uh, in a regular Unix environment. It was kind of funny. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon. And bye for now.